Good morning everyone and welcome to this special service for Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent. A very warm welcome if you are watching us live online this morning on Facebook or whether you are watching us recorded later in the day. Either way, you're very welcome. This isn't going to be a very long service, but it is uh, important, I think, for us to meet together, albeit virtually, on this special day, Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent. Now, if we were in church uh, for a normal service in a normal year, we'd probably start with the first hymn, which we will do now, and it's going to be 40 days and 40 nights, Thou wast fasting in the wild. You probably know the tune, if not the words, so you can either sing along with the words or just hum the tune. So it's our first hymn. So that was our first hymn, 40 Days and 40 Nights. So welcome if you've just joined us online. I can see we've got a number of people online now. And welcome if you're watching later in the day too. Um, Ash Wednesday, as you know, I'm sure, is the first day of Lent. I don't know about you, but I kind of feel that uh, as we approach Lent 2021, that I've already been in Lent for the whole of the last year. I seem to have given up so much you know, given up meeting with friends and relatives, given up church, given up going to the cinema, given up going on holiday, all those things that we've given up over the last year. Uh, it seems that like we've been in one long Lent. And I think that's a lot of how a lot of people are feeling this year. So if you feel that way, you're not alone. I feel that way too. And remember that Lent doesn't necessarily mean uh, giving things up. It can do that. But it can also mean doing some extra things as well. So the important thing is for this Lent 2021 that we all at least try and do something that's going to bring us closer to God. That would be my advice anyway. Now this service is not a communion service. Ash Wednesday would normally be but we're not doing that this morning. But there will be two other important elements of the service uh, which we will do. And there will be uh, what we sometimes call a <clears throat> an act of repentance, uh, a longer than normal time of confession, which is, I think, very appropriate for Ash Wednesday in the beginning of Lent. And uh, normally in Ash Wednesday also, the priest would make the sign of the cross on everyone's forehead with uh, ash. We can't do that this year, at least not virtually. Bit, bit difficult. Uh, but I will do that to myself on behalf of all of us, and I will suggest when we get to that point of the service something that you can do at the same time. So, that's enough by way of explanation. Let's begin the service, shall we? So, brothers and sisters, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance 
and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you therefore in the name of the church to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. And the collect for Ash Wednesday. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So now one reading for this morning, and uh, the reading comes from Paul's first letter to Timothy. Chapter 6, verses 6 to 19. So 1 Timothy 6, verses 6 to 19. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandments without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in an unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honour and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, that's a, a very good reading to start off Lent with. A lot of things in there to think about and to encourage us as we go forward, particularly in the context of riches. But I suppose on Ash Wednesday in particular, we reflect on and remember one particular thing and that's our own mortality. It may sound depressing, but it's true, we all die. That's what makes us human. And it's something that will come to all of us at some point. And we need to occasionally just to remember that and to reflect on what being mortal, being human, is really all about. And the first verse of that reading from 1 Timothy kind of made that clear. It said, we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. That's a verse which is sometimes read at funeral services for obvious reasons. As a human race, as members of a human race, we sometimes think of ourselves as being very special, very important, almost superhuman, almost invincible. 
and we accumulate lots of wealth and possessions, we accumulate a reputation, we like to think we're going to leave behind some kind of legacy, and so on. But the truth is we will all die one day and all of that remains behind. We can't take any of it with us. And I think this global pandemic, of which we're still very much part of, has taught us as humans and as a human race quite a lot. And we can only hope and pray that we will learn the lessons of it. You know, science, technology, medicine are all wonderful things. And at times we perhaps feel, uh, because of those things, we are almost invincible, almost superhuman rather than just ordinary mortals. But it's sobering to think, isn't it, that despite all of modern science, all of modern technology and all of modern medicine, one tiny microscopic virus has virtually brought the human race to its knees, socially, economically, medically and in so many different ways. It's reminded us that we are mortal, we are human, and we are still very much at the mercy of things that we can't control. And in the Ash Wednesday service, when the priest traditionally makes the sign of the cross on all the members of the congregation with ash, the priest says these words, Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And it's a chance, I suppose, at least once a year, or maybe we need to do it more often, but at least once a year, to acknowledge before God and each other to acknowledge our humanity, to acknowledge our frailty, and most of all to acknowledge our mortality. We are just mortals, we are just human, and to, and to offer ourselves to God humbly in repentance at the same time. And I think those words, remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return, this year in particular, on Ash Wednesday, in the midst of a pandemic, with a death toll, sadly, that's now fast approaching 120,000 in this country and many, many more worldwide. Those words are even more poignant, even more special, even more holy than usual. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. So, just in conclusion, we are all human. We are all mortal. You and I will one day die. But we don't need to be totally negative because we know, as Christians and as Christian believers, that we will also be raised from death to eternal life. And that, of course, is the message of Easter, which we will be celebrating in 40 days' time, once Lent is over. But before we can celebrate Easter properly and correctly, we need to go through Ash Wednesday and we need to go through Lent. It's always been my experience that if we take Lent seriously, if we use Lent to do all we can to draw closer to God, then Easter becomes for us something much more special and something much more significant, and we will appreciate it even more uh, if we go through Lent correctly. So, let me wish you a good Lent. Now, what we're going to do now is... Uh, take part together in an act of repentance. I will lead us in that and it will be a chance for us to say sorry to God as both as individuals and as part of the human race for some of the many things perhaps which we are sorry about and would like to see God forgive us for. So uh, for most of this act of confession the response to each section of prayers is Lord have mercy but towards the end the response changes to accept our repentance, Lord. But it'll be pretty clear uh, what we need to say at each particular time. So let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. 
we have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Lord, have mercy. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy and impatience of our lives. Lord, have mercy. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. Lord, have mercy. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Lord, have mercy. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Lord, have mercy. And now the responses to our prayers change to accept our repentance, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cr cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbours, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favourably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. A moment of silence for us to just confess anything else personally to God that we would like to do so on this Ash Wednesday, at the beginning of Lent. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And now the service moves on to uh, what is formally called the imposition of ashes. Now, as I said at the beginning of the service, normally in an Ash Wednesday service, if they wanted to, people would come up to the altar rail and the priest would make the sign of the cross on their forehead with uh, ash mixed with oil. Usually the ash is made from the palm crosses from the previous year being burnt and mixed with oil and then uh, the, oil, the uh, ash put on the forehead of the person. Well, we can't do that year, this year, unfortunately, but I will do it to myself on behalf of all of us. And I suggest that uh, while I'm doing that, you individually uh, would just like to make the sign of the cross on your forehead yourself. Not with ash, but just with your finger like this. Just to remind you of your humanity, of your mortality and your humility before God at the start of Lent. Acknowledging that we are just humans. We're nothing special. We're just human, saved by grace and loved by God. So let's proceed with this next part of the service. We receive these ashes as a sign of the spirit of penitence with which we shall keep this season of Lent. 
God our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our penitence and a symbol of our mortality. For it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. So I will make the sign of the cross on my own forehead with ash and if you'd like to do the sign of the cross on your forehead at the same time and just consider the significance of what that means. Remember that you are but dust and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. God our Father, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And there is also space in the service for us to share the peace with each other. Uh, so we can do that now. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another virtually a sign of peace. So you might want to type in on your iPad or phone or whatever you're watching on a message of peace for the rest of those watching and for those who'll be watching later in the day. And uh, you may, of course, as you go about your business today, see people walking around the street, rather like I am at the moment, with this ash cross on their forehead. It may be that they've been to um, some kind of event, socially distanced, which has enabled them to get that cross. I know that some churches have actually sent out ashes in the post to uh, people so they can do, them, do it themselves. Uh, but that's a sign that we are mortal and that we are repenting of our sins during this season of Lent. So as the service draws to a close now, just some words from Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, from Jesus' famous parable, the parable of the lost sheep. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbours, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who need no repentance. Perhaps that's a good thought to leave with each other as we finish this service. There will be more, more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who need no repentance. And if we have seriously repented this morning, then there will be joy in heaven because of that. God loves it when we repent and say sorry for the things that we've done wrong. And so now the final prayer and blessing. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So thank you very much for joining me this morning on Ash Wednesday. 
uh, for this short service and I hope you found it helpful and feel that you will have started Lent in a very good and positive way. And I hope and pray that all of us will have a very real and special Lent, even in a year where things have been pretty difficult anyway. And we may feel as if we've been in a constant Lent for a long period of time. I do pray that this Lent will still be a very special one for all of us. And who knows, maybe at Easter, we may even be back in the church. It's quite possible, I suppose. So uh, I wish you a very, very good rest of the day and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.